I want to thank you for watching and I want to show you today that you can take simple chords that you know and you can play some really iconic licks with them. Now I know we tend to think about chords as just something that we play when we're playing rhythm guitar and we tend to think about lead as you know all these scales and these modes that we learn and and it is true that you probably need to learn your scales and your modes but you can play some really iconic things with just chords and moving them around the guitar neck. And one that comes to mind that everybody uses as an example, you know, is, you know, and that's just D, C ninth, and G, and we're just picking inside of those chords. But I also want you to think about these chords as being able to be moved around the neck. For example, this D chord is able to be moved anywhere around the neck. Now, you obviously don't want to strum all the strings when you're moving it. You just want to mainly focus on the ones that you're holding down. But this D shape is movable anywhere. Same with like this bar chord. Obviously, bar chords are movable, but this bar chord is the same as making an F shape. And one of the reasons why I like moving the F shape around more than the bar chord is because when you're playing a bar chord, you're actually using all your fingers, so you don't really have a spare finger to be picking inside of, or to, you know, to add things or take things away as easily as you do when you're playing an F chord because we do actually have a spare finger. I know it's your pinky, but it's time to utilize your pinky, and you can use it to add some really cool embellishments to these chords that can turn into great lead licks. The other thing that you're able to do pretty easily if you're making this F shape is lift fingers up, So let's take this F shape and let's move it all the way up here to the 10th fret. This is making a D chord, the same shape, same place you would play your D bar chord. We're just going to be playing an F, then we're going to move it down two frets and play a C, and then we're going to play our D chord right here, put our pinky down, and then lift it back up, and this is a really iconic lick. is use chords, movable chords around, and we've made a lick that everybody knows. Uh, another idea is that if you take this F shape, let's just move it up here to the fifth fret where your pointer finger is on the fifth fret. Remember I told you you can lift this middle finger up, you can hammer it on back to this G string, and you can even lay your finger flat there on the seventh fret. Now what I'm thinking when I'm laying my finger flat on the 7th fret is that this is an A shape moved up. And if I move this A shape up, I get A sharp or B flat, I get B, I get C, I get C sharp, and I get a D. So if I lay my finger flat on the 7th fret, I get a D chord. So I was playing an A chord, hammering on with this middle finger, laying my finger flat to make a D chord. Hammering on laying my finger flat to make a D chord. Now if I add this open A string in with that, and all I'm doing is hammering on to this A chord and laying my finger flat. So I'm just thinking about A and D, but all of a sudden I've got working man blues inside of this chord. So I'm just thinking about these chord shapes and I'm picking inside of them and making iconic licks. Another example of a movable chord that you should utilize is if we can move a D around, then we can move a D seventh around. And I know you're thinking, well, I don't really know any solos or any lead licks that use a D seventh. And I would say, yes, you do. Let's take this D seventh and let's move it up two frets make it an E7th, and let's just strum this and walk it back down to an E chord. So, and all of a sudden you're going, wait a minute, I do know that, that's just a typical blues turnaround, and that's this D7th shape walking down. Now, instead of playing it all at the same time, we can pick the G, the B, and the E independently, so... What if 
if we don't play this B string? What if we just play the G and the E? But it's still the same idea. Still this D7th. We're just skipping the B string in here. Or what if we don't skip the B string? What if we just play the B and the G and we don't play the E? This is this D7. I'm just not playing the E string. Moving it down two frets, opening where I'm just hitting those strings open, and then playing my E chord. So this is that D7 that we're just moving around and then going back to our E chord. How about if we take that same idea? I'm playing an E7th. I'm going to go all the way up here where I'm at the 10th and 11th fret. So this would be a B7th. And I'm just going to be playing the G and the E string like we did down here. And I'm going to shake them. To my B chord. And then you have the beginning of Red House. So you can see this D7th can be moved around everywhere and you can make lots of really neat licks with it and this works in any key so if this was B7 I move it down to I get an A7 and I can do licks there back to this F shape hammer on that we were doing earlier so you see that you can start incorporating some of these ideas into each other another movable chord that is pretty useful is a C chord. Now, a C chord in and of itself isn't really movable because we've got an open string. We've got an open G string that we're not doing anything with. But if we put our pinky down on the third fret of the G string, all of a sudden, now we're playing almost all the strings and we can move this around. So if we move it up two frets, we get a D seventh. Move it up two more, we get an E seventh. Now, that might actually sound familiar to some of y'all, and this is, inside of this chord shape, is a solo, an intro to a song that you know. So all I'm doing is making this C seventh shape. I've just moved it up to the fifth fret, so now I've got an E seventh. Just picking inside of it and all of a sudden I've got an iconic lick that everybody has heard and it's just picking inside of a chord. You can also take this C seventh idea and do lots of things with it like so I'm just going down one fret and sliding back up but it's a neat little lick playing lead, that's a neat little lick to throw in there, and all it is is just a chord. Back to your A. So you can see that we're starting to put together some lead licks just inside of these movable chords. Another idea we talked about this A and we were walking it up, you know, if we go up here to the 5th fret, it's a C. And remember we said if we go up here to the 7th fret, just laying our finger flat, we get a D chord. So I'm going to be thinking about here on the 7th fret, the only note that I'm going to add other than the chord itself is I'm going to add this ninth fret here on the D string. We can play, once again, an iconic intro just using chords. Go down to your A chord, same thing. Back to your D chord. Back to the A chord. Back to the D chord. So again, we're playing iconic licks with just movable chords. So I really do hope that you start incorporating these movable chord ideas and there are hundreds if not thousands of movable chord ideas and you just need to play around with them and find your own licks inside of them and I promise you can start playing lead 
with just movable chords, or if you already know how to play lead, start thinking about incorporating some of these chordal ideas into your lead playing. So I really do hope that helps, and if there's something else you need, just reach out to me. I'll be glad to help you.